Welcome to the second part of restoring this Countax D1850 lawn tractor. So we've had to dismantle everything and work out what is salvageable and what is going to have to be thrown away. I've had to clean up some horrible welds, take all the original paint off, prime everything and then finally paint everything with red top coat. So far I'm quite happy with the result. But this is how it stands at the beginning of this part. You can see it has taken shape a little bit between the two parts, but overall it is still needing quite a bit of work. I have painted the wheel rims, they look a lot better. The tyres will be replaced at some stage, but at the moment they do still have some life in them, and they're also very expensive to replace. The engine generally cleaned it all up, and I've also installed a stop solenoid, which cost £120 just for that little stop solenoid. Uh, which is quite expensive. Um, the wires will have to be trained around the side so they don't get caught on the muffler or melted on the muffler. But yeah, it's looking quite good. I'm quite impressed with it so far. The actuator is silver again. Someone has sprayed it red, I don't know why. Uh, but that's looking much better. And the dashboard, although it is the original decals, it's still looking, I think, much better than it did do. Although I do still have to clean things up on there. Around the back I've put a new PTO flap on and I put a sticker on there. Uh, there are still holes in the back so that will have to be plated at some point in the near future. But if we take a walk over here, here is a new or should I say used bonnet which looks a lot better. This was £100 and also £30 for the side guards which are incredibly hard to find so I'm so pleased that I managed to get my hands on some of them. Uh, but yeah it's looking better than it did definitely and it is taking shape again, but there is still lots more work to do before it's finished. And as if by magic, the first foot panel appears on the tractor. And just by putting that on, it makes it look a lot better. So do the other side and then we'll move on. Right, that's all done. And now we've got the seat. This is a brand new seat, which also cost 110 pounds, but this is one with armrests, which made it twice the price, but it is a lot more comfortable so it should be really nice for me or whoever's operating the tractor at the time uh, so yeah definitely worth it I'd say right that's the seat on and it's looking quite good it's taking shape slowly but surely so all we'll have to do now is put the bonnet on and then we'll take it for a spin about 10 minutes later and we've got the bonnet and side guards on the side guards and the bonnet actually have soundproofing inside it so it should make the engine quieter which is always nice because you never want a loud engine uh, but yes definitely in the sun especially it's making it look really quite smart especially compared to what it used to be like uh, definitely a big difference I've also sprayed the oil dipstick black because this was like a faded red color which it shouldn't have been and you can see the soundproofing on the inside of that panel there also it's really shining in the sun which really does make it look quite good so all I have to do now is start the engine up, take it for a spin and see if the performance is any different or if there's anything not working. There's certainly no problem with the engine now, so that's good. Uh, but now I'm working on the electromagnetic clutch, which originally had been rewired. Uh, I don't know why, because the original wires I'm hoping are going to work, because they're still there. What I've done is I've put two terminals on them. There's two hanging down there for the headlights. Uh, but the two which are plugged in are for the clutch. The white or cream one is the positive and the black is the negative. And they go up to the switch, which is under the dashboard. And I've plugged those in just there, quite hard to see. And really all I'm going to do is test them to see if they work. So we'll turn the ignition on and oh, there's my little model of the Camtax. It's actually modeled on this tractor. 
Yeah, we turn the ignition on and yeah, it should click when we press the switch. That clutch in there should make a, a ping sound when we turn it on and off. So I'll put the camera as close as possible and see if we can hear it. You can actually see it moving a little bit as well. So now I know the clutch works, I've now got the deck out of storage and yeah, it's uh, not too bad, but it's not amazing. I will be restoring over the winter on my other channel, Machinery Restorer, so if you want to see that then head over to that channel now and the link is on the screen. But yeah, it is solid and that is the most important thing I look for in a deck. It's definitely restorable, um, even if it does need new blades and bearings, but yeah, it's not too bad overall. And I'm hoping to actually cut some grass today, even though it's not much about, with it being this time of year now. Uh, but yeah, I want to give it a go. The plastic top cover will also need replacing. I think that's in the region of £80 though, so no expense spared. So luckily, this is electric and it makes it a lot easier for fitting. Just lower them down into the bracket and it should have like easy pins which go through with a split pin or an R-clip. Um, but someone's lost those, so it's just bolts that we're using today. I'll have to get some more when I restore this thing in the winter. There is actually one. It looks like that. So there's the deck. It's now on. So I'm going to now make sure everything is working properly before we go and take it out. The belt's on there as well, all tensioned. I'm going to have to make some rubber matting as well for these because these shouldn't be red. There should be like rubber matting in between here and on the footrests. When you engage the clutch, there's a little light LED which flashes. I don't know how well you can see it, but it tells you that it's engaged. And also I've done 2.2 hours on the new PCB. So the next job is to do the foot mats and you can see what I've done is I've drawn round some newspaper and that has made the template for when I put it on the rubber. This is the rubber here and it's like ribbed inside so it should be anti-slip and hopefully I'll be able to stick it with some spray adhesive and it should work and it should look quite good. So I'm going to do that now and I should get back to you in a second.
Right, so it's actually the next day now, and I've done it, and it's all stuck down, and I think they look quite good. Obviously these aren't the original parts, I've made my own because it's a lot cheaper, and uh, I guess if you buy the actual roll of material, when these wear out you can make your own again. So I think this is probably the best way of doing it, but I think it looks quite good. Obviously I'll leave the judgement to you. The next job is to change the self-adhesive grip paper which is on the pedals. So here we are, I've traced around the old ones, I've managed to peel them off and I've, I've made some new ones out of the same material and they're obviously much cleaner and haven't been sprayed with paint. The old one was also wearing off, so these do look a lot better. So the tractor is now coming together. What it's going to be really at the end of this is just lots of little jobs, things you don't even really notice. Most of the restoration is now done. Next we have a few parts which I bought which needs to be fitted. A tool tray which is obviously very easy, an adhesive Countax badge which I think should probably go under the seat, it'll look quite neat there. And then underneath the wire we've got a diesel fuel only sticker which should obviously go on the fuel tank which currently says unleaded only which is weird. So the tool tray is easy, that just goes under the seat and sits in its place there. That's very simple. Next we've got the diesel fuel only sticker. I think it's actually a Briggs & Stratton original part, this cap, so it's obviously not original. It says, unleaded gasoline only. So yeah, definitely not right. We need to put that new sticker on there. It's actually an original Countax part, this sticker as well, so it should fit perfectly. There it is. Much better. Now people won't be putting unleaded in there when it's diesel. That would be the end of the engine. Good, so that is one job done. Next I've put the Countax badge on, I didn't film this because I have to have a really steady hand to line it up, but yeah, I think that does work. It wasn't there originally, but it does look quite good. Now you may have noticed that this isn't actually the original sweeper which I bought with the tractor. This is another one which I bought. This is much better and it cost around £250 I think, used. But it, it's so much better because it actually has the electric ram in it and it all works as it should do. So definitely worth it. And the electric tip is just so nice. You can tip it with the touch of a button. And here we are. The, the main restoration is now done. This is what it looks like. It looks quite good. Obviously the deck still has to be done. But the rest of the tractor is finished. Except for a few minor jobs which you don't even notice. The foot mats are all there, I've cleaned it, and it has definitely come together very well. There is actually a knee pad missing from this side, I'm still waiting for that, so that will be fitted in due course. So hopefully you've enjoyed this mini-series of restoring this Countax D1850 lawn tractor. It's actually cost more than I thought it would do, probably in the region of 15 to 1700 pounds, so quite expensive, but I think the end result is quite good. So thanks for watching, and until next time, bye for now.